Okay, well, uh, as people are arriving, very warm welcome. Gosh, yeah, do, you, your, your faces are all beginning to sort of appear and yeah, I'm getting a sense of who's coming. So yeah, mm. very, very warm welcome yes. to, um, to this uh, 10th anniversary of Bhante Sagarakshita's arrival at Adistana. So um, yeah, we are, um, well, I'm Rani Ketu and we have Paramatha Martha as well. So we are in the, um, the connected shrine room of Adistana. And um, yeah, in fact, we've just had in, in the library atrium a, uh, a ceremony in which we've been welcoming mm. um, quite a substantial Padma Samava Rupa, uh, which has just coincided with the, the 10th anniversary of, of Bhante's arrival. Uh, we'll, we'll probably allude to that later on as we, as we go on. Um, but yeah, we, we've got um, we've got a really, I just I think really fascinating evening planned. Um, so yeah, ten years ago, uh, Bante Sagarachita arrived at Adistana. Uh, we'll have um, reminiscences from people who were who were there at the time. So we've got spe various special guests, uh, including uh, Radhadarani, Yashadeva, Sangadeva, who's just arrived in the room, uh, Sadanandi, Kema Bandhu. Uh, we've got video footage of the um, of the time when he arrived and uh, around that time as well. Poetry reading, we'll have a little ritual too. So there's um, and, and a sneak preview of the the next exhibition at Ergian House. So there's actually quite a lot. I'm going to learn. I hope quite a lot from, <laughs> from the, the course yeah. of this evening uh, mm -hmm. around uh, around that anniversary time. Um, so yeah, this this is a, a collaboration between the Ergian Sangharachita Trust, which is the trust which um, which kind of brings Bante Sangharachita alive through his uh, through his archives, through his artifacts, um, which yeah sort of speaks of his life more uh, more broadly, uh, and with Adi Stana as well, yeah, who's uh, who are hosting us, and, and we're, we're very very fortunate to have the the technological kind of powerhouse of Adi Stana um, backing us up as, as well for this. Um, so yeah, the um, yeah really uh, what we're trying to do is is uh, this evening is to to give a sense of the significance of uh, Bante's arrival here, um, which is probably quite difficult to sort of spell out, you know, to, to articulate, um, you know, what, what, what is the significance of, uh, of Bante coming to Adistana and then these being his last years here? Um, you know, we can talk about place and the importance of place for a community. Uh, there's that um, line in the Puja, isn't there? Um, I pay homage to all the shrines and places in which the Bodhisattvas have been. And of course, that's referring to the um, well, like the places that in the Buddha's life story in, in India and Nepal. Um, but there's something equivalent for us, isn't there? I think uh, it's, it's true about the Buddhists of having um, having a connection to the place where, or you know, one of the places, or certainly the place where where Sakurajita lived at the end of his life. So, um, so yeah, that it, hopefully through everything that we're offering, you will get a good sense of what you know what that means. And it will come out. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, I mean, should we just kick off then? So, so Paramatma, sure. you, yeah. you obviously a very a kind of long term friend of Bante's. You you were with him for the last few decades of his life. And um, so, yeah. What what kind of brought about Bante deciding he wanted to move to any star of the country? Yes. Well, welcome everybody. Um, yes. The. The move on the 21st, uh, 24th of February 2013 um, was significant. Um, that was the arrival of Bante. Extraordinary, really, that he um, could be part of the Adistata community in the last days of his life. Um, wonderful. Um, and uh, make it his home and actually feel at home, actually. Not only make his home here, but actually feel at home, um, uh, which is something to really rejoice and something to really celebrate, I think. But I think it's worth remembering that it was a pretty close run thing, this whole project. <laughs> um, from what I've heard from the people involved, um, just to find a suitable property was, was difficult enough. The project started, uh, initially it was the library project, the Sangharachita library project, but it, it was started in 2008. So the property wasn't found until 2012. Um, and there were lots of ups and downs and negotiations. And I think Ratnadharani uh, would tell you that even the securing of Coddington Court, it was known, turned on a sixpence at the end of the day. So that's extraordinary. 
I think also extraordinary that Bante in his late 80s could actually make the move, quite frankly. I mean, if you think about it, anybody of that age, it's hard enough uh, for most people to make a substantial move. But an elderly person, and Bante, at, uh, as I say, in his late 80s, I think it was a major move. He'd been settled uh, at Marjumaloka for many, many years. In fact, um, he was, well, he's, at least he told me he was quite comfortable there. He's quite happy there. And Marjumaloka in Birmingham uh, was a place where he, he lived longer than any other place he'd lived in his life. So you can imagine the wrench it must have, have been to uh, make such a substantial move. Um, but this was a, a project that was very close to his heart. Yeah, a project that very close to Bante's heart. Uh, and he was well aware that it would be his last home. It would be his final move and he would end his days here. He didn't actually talk much about the significance of that move, at least not to me at the time. Um, but I know it was important to him. Um, it was about a year later, um, February 2014, after we'd moved to Adistana, that he reminded me of the fact. He said to me one weekend, uh, you do realise what the date is on Monday, don't you? <laughs> and of course, I panicked. <laughs> I'm going sort of super broadband through my mind, going through the calendars, trying to think. Was it the ordination as Bicky ordination? Was it his going for what, you know? Uh, Johnson, yeah, it yeah, was something like that, you know, and I, I just couldn't for the life of me think. I'm not very good at dates. But of course, he relieved me of my um, discomfort by saying, well, actually, it's the first anniversary of our move to Addy Star. So, um, yeah, so I know it was important to him. Um, and uh, he wouldn't have necessarily uh, expected others to mark it. Actually, we did in our own way throughout those years. Um, but Bante being Bante, he had this very strong sense of uh, occasion. Yeah, uh, He had this very strong sense of the importance of marking occasions. I put it down to something like, I haven't quite articulated this to myself, like a fidelity or a faithfulness to whatever significant is unfolding in time within one's life. And, more widely in the order. Um, so he did mark it in his own sort of understated, quiet way on that first year. Um, and we're marking it, of course, and we're celebrating it, and so we should. Uh, we've all benefited, benefited in so many ways from having Bante make his home here in the last years of his life. And as I say, he, he did make his home here. And so many people have come to Adistana to see Bante. So it holds significance um, for so many people. And of course, we can still come and visit Ergen House where he lived. So we're going to uh, show a little, we're going to go back, back in time. Yeah. Um, and we're going to show uh, a video that um, was made at the time where it was the very early stages of the land. standing in the cold and the rain right now to say welcome to Coddington. I don't know how much longer we're going to be calling it Coddington, but this is the place that we found after three years of searching, and that was my job for the last, well, nearly three years, working with a couple of others, trying to find a place that was going to be the place. And this finally is it. This is the old building, the old house. That will be a men's community and 
it looks the most impressive building but believe me it's not the nicest building to be in it's the coldest it's got terrible insulation and uh, no heating at all at the moment and it's only a little bit bigger than the community that the women's community is going to be in although it looks a lot bigger but it's actually only going to house eight or nine people communities are an important part of the project but it's a much bigger project than that because this place is going to be a focus for Sangrakshita's teachings. There's going to be a library which has got his books in it and his own collection. There's going to be an exhibition centre and a retreat facility that will hopefully serve up to about 120 people. But the main focus of that is going to be study and in particular study of Sangharakshita's exposition of the Dharma. So that's what the anchor of this project is. And in a sense, I think that becomes the anchor for our whole movement. So if you look to the little building on the end of that big building, then that little building is where Sangharakshita is going to live. Nothing fancy. We had to find a place that would work as, well, what will essentially be Bante Sangharakshita's final home. When we first came here, the, this pond was surrounded by railings. The house was surrounded by railings. In fact, the whole site was also surrounded by railings because in its prior use, it was a residential school for autistic children. It's run by a charity. So one of the first things we did was to take away all the railings. In fact, there's still a pile of green railings, which we hope we might be able to sell on eBay. Well, let's see. So we've exposed what, what's really, what was there, which was actually a very charming Georgian house, um, built the end of the 1700s. Um, and it's, the other buildings that you're going to see were added in the 1980s and 1990s. But that original house is listed and we've got to look after it. And actually it's a great pleasure to be, well, revealing it for what it really once was. So, what a wonderful little clip. I think <laughs> starting to have flashbacks. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so actually um, in uh, the first visit that uh, myself and Bante made to Coddington Court as it was then, uh, was in September 2012, uh, before Bante uh, had a few health problems. Uh, this was four months before the move to Adistana, of course. And so the project was, as you can see, in its very early days. Uh, I remember it as a very, uh, a, a rather damp, cold day on the cusp of winter. And um, of course, as Mo Mocha Priya alluded, and as you could see, it wasn't the most conducive place to live and work at the time. Um, in fact, even prior to the initial visit in 2012 in September, Bante had commented to me and probably others uh, about those working and living there without any heating. Um, I think Sangadeva and Ratnadharani had actually, were actually camping on the third floor of the, what was to become the men's community without any heat. Um, and there was a small band of ascetic order members that were trying to knock this place into shape. Bante was very impressed by this. Yeah? Um, not least of all, because I know what sort of temperatures Bante was used to in his own <laughs> living accommodation. Um, he, he had that, uh, no doubt, as, a, as, a, as something he bought from uh, his time in India, but also as, as he get, got older, uh, he needed that heat. So yes, it impressed Bante, and he mentioned it to a few people, how impressed he was. But anyway, we did visit uh, and we, uh, Ratnadharani and others showed us around. Um, I must admit, it took a little bit of imagination to see beyond the railings uh, and to see beyond the rather unprepossessing buildings as you come in. Um, but um, I think Bante, particularly, uh, at least in his imagination, I think, could sort of see the potential quite easily of the place. I, I could tell he was impressed. I was certainly impressed. 
um, particularly when we visited what was to become the library, which is an impressive building in its own way, uh, in a sense, the heart of, of Adistana even when the first floor hadn't been taken out. So you couldn't see that internal space in all its glory. Um, even then it was impressive. And of course, the heart of the, of, of the library project uh, is, 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 is in that building. Um, and that library project has blossomed as Adistana in its own way. So that, that continues uh, the library uh, project in, in many ways and um, the project around the archives uh, by Ergen House. So just after that visit, actually, Bante did get ill. Uh, and uh, he, he certainly up until the time um, that he moved and beyond for the, for the next couple of years, he was having um, problems with his health, largely insomnia. So, um, really corrosive effect on his health, actually. He suffered quite a lot, but he he made the move. Yeah, I always look back and think, what sort of forbearance, really, someone in their early 80s suffering from health problems, actually finally making that move. So we're going to hear a little bit from Bante himself in a letter that was written, actually, to me, um, part of his, his, his later writings, which you can have a look at, look at on the... Ergen Sandaracha website. Well, actually, this is um, this is from the very beautiful Adistana 10th anniversary booklet. So it's, it's an edited down version. So you know, if you get a chance to, to visit here, you can you can get these. It's got a program and also all sorts of kind of bits and bobs and uh, yeah, photos and a bit of the story of uh, Adistana's last 10 years as well. So this is but this is from that time. This is the time yeah. of the move. So he wrote. At the time I was quite ill. I was suffering from insomnia, which Tamazepam sleeping tablets did little to relieve. Indeed, they made me feel worse. Thus, during the last two weeks of February, I was not at all in good shape. Yet the move still had to be made. In fact, I felt it had to be made as soon as possible. I had the strong conviction, whether rational, or irrational, I know not, that otherwise I could die before getting to Adistana. And I wanted desperately to get there and spend my last days within its peaceful shades. A great deal of packing had to be done and done quickly. <laughs> Ill as I was, I helped Vidyaruchi, who was Bante's secretary at the time, pack the images and books from my study. Paramartha, almost single-handedly, packed everything else that was in the flat and in the treasury next door. This included crockery, kitchen utensils, clothes, books, pictures, box files, tunkers, and more than 90 rupers of various kinds. Eventually, everything was packed, and at 11.30 a.m. on Sunday, the 24th of February, 2013, we set off for Adistana. The rest of 2013 proved to be a difficult time for me. Adistana was still a building site with noisy, heavy machinery operating each day of the week until August when Adistana had its official opening. I was still very ill with only very small improvements in my condition from month to month. So we're going to welcome Matt Darini then. So you want to come and sit with us. And uh, we've got a bit of video, haven't we, from the Bante's first arrival on the 21st of February, 2013. Hello, 
actually raining on that day for once. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> You'd actually come about about three years. <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I never found out what was in the red box. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh I'll tell you what. Yeah, that's another story. Actually, it's probably good to mention it here. The red box uh, that the Jewish is carrying into her house contains. Dada Rinpoche's ashes, some, some of uh, <laughs> Fante said he wanted to place in a shrine at the heart of the line. Oh, in a shrine at the heart of the day when the petal. The day was. Point, I'm absolutely terrified that Bante's going to fall over. Beautiful <laughs> 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 petals. We have made a few adjustments to the annex, raised the floor so it was heavy throughout. And we built a conservatory, which is, I think, Bante's only main request. Which worked very, very well for him. Oh, extremely well. Yeah. yeah, he spent a lot of time in the conservatory in the five years he was at Addistan. It looked quite bare there, but it became a bit of a shrine. It had a lot of um, significant objects mm. there. For him. About at least 30 degrees. <laughs> at least, mm. yeah, yeah. He took quite a long time to put his picture up. Actually, yeah. Well, the, you don't see the pictures on the wall, but actually, one of the, the uh, tankers that Bante had from Kalimpong was put up on the wall, the medicine Buddha, which we thought was appropriate mm -hmm. for the time, obviously, of Bante. I feel. He had been warned that it was a building site, but he didn't realise what that meant. <laughs> well, from what I remember, it looked like a scene out of World War One with trenches and mud and plumbing put down, or was it electrics? I can't remember. Everything. Yeah, yeah. it was quite something. Really. Mm. Yeah, so um, I suppose in a way it might be nice to share a few uh, reminiscences about that time. We've got Sunday day and Yesha day and Ratnadar. Um, it was quite a period, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> to say the least. Um, I know all the work. Uh, I was intimately involved with all the work from the Marjimaloka end. Uh, actually, that was that was a challenge. I, it wasn't me just packing up. I co-opted a few friends, Shantapala and Parmashanti, to help with the process. And it was quite a strange thing because Bante was, uh, as we said, suffering from insomnia, but he was trying to catch up with his sleep during the day. So we had to dismantle everything quietly and slowly. I think the last things to go were probably his toothbrush and things like that, his shaver, and then you know, on the day uh, come. So it was quite a process, but I can't imagine, you know, the work there was nothing compared to the work that you guys uh, faced trying to knock this place into shape. Yeah. Well, I remember it was a priority. Um, Mark Chapria was very clear that we had to get the annex done mm -hmm. first. So that was our, apart from the drains and the, all the excavating that was going mm -hmm. on, the annex was the was the number one job. And luckily, because we just managed to, I don't know whether you noticed in the video, but I think even in the conservatory, there were still pipes sticking <laughs> up with no radiators on them at that point. Um, but it was good enough. And for me, it, it wasn't just a matter of Banti making it to Adistana, what was to become Adistana. 
but it was the fact that he was able to live there happily for so many years mm. and that Adistana could actually start to function and that Banti was part of that and could see that. That was a, a real blessing. That yeah, really was yeah, a blessing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A real blessing. A place of blessings. A place mm. of blessings. <laughs> Adistana. Yeah. I, rem I remember the day when, when, uh, when Banti arrived and it did. It, it almost felt as if all the angle grinding dust was still in the air as he as he as he arrived. It seemed quite a sort of white day, you know, sort of powdery mm -hmm. sort of day. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of dust in those days, and uh, and the sort of dust settled, and in and in he came. And then you might have noticed the little ruby red car. Ashwajit was in that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could just see him at the back of the picture, as it were. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, today we've just been to get this great big Padmasambha Rupa and. And on the way back, we visited Ashfaji, so that was that was quite significant as well. But it just built up very slowly because um, I think I moved in first because I was most available, and Sangadeva very soon afterwards. And we started. Um, we didn't really realise we were starting a community, but we were both second nature community right. people. So. Mm -hmm. We just did it, and mm. how long was it before you joined? It was still a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. very long. Yeah. I lived in a so. cupboard for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tell us about that. <laughs> Some of the rooms in the main house have got two okay. two bedrooms, and they uh, share this sort of slightly strange shape sort of cupboard between the two. Mm. And it was about five degrees in the house at that time, and I remember I'd set up. Uh, a bed with a electric blanket. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> two duvets. It was about five degrees in the house, and uh, that was my little cubby hole, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, I have to say, I loved the adventure of it. Actually, mm -hmm. I remember. I remember there was condensation on the outside of the building. <laughs> well, the outside of the building. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the place that you welcomed Bandy and yeah, yeah. actually I'm, the lovely I remember the first time he came with mm. you to yeah. have a look at the place mm. and decide where he would live in it um I was living there I think I was the I was there on my own which really mm. impressed him and yeah. he said what was it like being on there on my own and I said oh it's fine except at night I keep hearing scratching on the window because there's a magnolia tree on the other side. And Banty really lit up at that. <laughs> and he said, oh, he started scratching the table. <laughs> and he said, ghosts. <laughs> I said, oh, I don't believe in ghosts. Yeah. And he said, uh, that's a challenge to any self-respecting ghost. <laughs> I mean, one of the most, it was, it was very difficult actually on the building site and you'd be working away outside with the supervising with the diggers, and then every, every so often the paramarfa would appear right the jet, he'd be waving, I stop the work, stop the work. Mm -hmm. So we we did have to um, accommodate Banty's uh, mm -hmm. needs quite a lot actually in that first time. He was just so unwell that any work around the property, which was near his place, we had to stop on quite, quite a few occasions actually. So it was it was tough for all of us, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. but it was particularly tough, for yeah. Banto. Mm -hmm. And he needed to sleep so much. He needed to sleep yeah. when he, whenever he could get sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. digging a I was I was I thought, oh I'm gonna build, I'm gonna put a hedge around Banty. So I'm using a pickaxe and then was a knock on the window. Mm -hmm. Paramartha. <laughs> <laughs> no. All a halt. You can't do that now. <laughs> well, I think I think most of the time Banto was, I mean, I've got photos of the time Banto just in his chair during the day trying to catch up yeah. on sleep yeah. um and for, for for hours at a time he just wasn't getting enough sleep at that stage so it was very painful for him a very painful time but um thankfully eventually we we got the balance of medications right and um well that's that that that's a little bit i'm jumping forward a little bit but yeah um i you know it, it was good we visited and at the time you were there actually because I think a month or two later, it just wouldn't have been possible. Um, yeah. So we have another uh, another video offering, um, and I'm pleased that I found something with Ashwajit in it, um, who's speaking to camera, camera, because Ashwajit is currently in a care home um, in Wales. In fact, I think Yashadevi we visited, visited him, him today. today. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. quite well. 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad Aspergic's well. Um, so we'll have a look at that. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Sankhaya, Namo Namo. I felt affirmed as a member of the order, a very wonderful order. I felt affirmed by the friendship and the energy and the positivity of everybody around. Everybody seems to be completely into it, whether they're senior order members, new order members, mitras, friends, everybody seems infected almost by a kind of uh, energy and delight in the place. This is, this is what we're into. We're into, into creating a new society. It's rather an old fashioned word, I know. But I feel that, you know, we've got something very special here. He's getting old but he's still delightful to be with. He's um, lively when he's got sufficient energy to be lively. If he slept well the previous night, then he can be really just himself, very bright and entertaining even, and interesting and fascinating. It will be Vanti's last resting place. And I think people will come here to savour the atmosphere that is created by the community and by I think there'll be quite a strong feeling of Bhante's presence here. His influence is already felt in this sort of spreading out. Local people have asked, um, you know, is, is your leader there? Is he... <laughs> are the monks there? <laughs> because we laugh. <laughs> so, well, we, we are them. <laughs> the community here is going to be very important, a very important influence in the movement. And I really feel that it's a blessing to be here. I mean, it's very well named Adistana, which means, of course, blessing uh, or place of blessing. I think it's all set up for a really good outcome. Yeah. So um, that's lovely, isn't it? It's really, really <laughs> evocative to see um, the early yeah. stages of Adi Star there. So, so we, we're now welcoming Sadanandi, and Kema Bandu is just about to join as well. Um, and uh, and in a, in a few moments' time, uh, we, well, we're going to talk to Sadanandi and Kema Bandu about um, well, about kind of the significance of Bante's being here at Adi Star. Mm. And then, mm. and after that, there's going to be an opportunity if if you want to. Um, uh, i.e. the audience, the, the live audience, too, uh, to ask questions of the people who are here or even maybe share some of your own memories of, uh, of Bante uh, Adistana. So uh, maybe just have a think about that as we, as we uh, go through this next bit. So, so Bante said um, in a way quite, um, quite strongly, didn't he, that these, mm. these last five years were his happiest mm. of his mm. life yes. um, at Adistana. So uh, what do you understand by that? How, 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 how do you think of um, that? Well, I think Bante did talk about it a number of times, and he, he talked about um, his health improving, of course, that he had all his uh, wants and uh, needs cared for. Um, actually, I remember him somewhere saying, uh, um, holding up the blessings of creativity, creative expression, being able to write was very important for Bante. It gave him a lot of um, well, uh, joy and uh, obviously did wonders for, for his vitality. Um, and the beauty of the place, actually, the conservatory has been mentioned. Uh, it was just delightful to be able to sit there winter and summer, particularly in the summer where he would often open the windows and Sangadeva had um, planted roses so that the scent could sort of waft through on a summer evening uh, and he would spend time there. Um, Bante's sight wasn't good, so all of his senses seemed to be alive uh, at, those, at those periods. So he'd often ask me about these little shadows that would come across the path. You know, what's that, Paramartha? And I'd go, well, that's a hedgehog, Bante. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, 
a, a, a, a woodpecker or a row of ducks, or he was always curious, almost childlike um, fascination with what was going on just outside the conservatory, uh, nature, uh, phases of the moon, things like that. Um, so, but I think I think the la largely um, he's he was where he wanted to be amongst a circle of friends, amongst the sangha. Uh, I think largely, uh, largely that you know uh, at the heart of the of the sangha, at the heart of the community. And Adi Stana gave him that opportunity and supported and cared for him in the midst of 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 his difficulties and beyond. And um, yeah, he said to me, you know. Uh, he just valued that context, that mandala of care and support and friendship that Adistana was to provide. So, you know, not only the community, the likes of Southern Nandi, um, important friendship with Bante and Yashadeva and Sangadeva, everybody contributing, but also those close to him. The Jiruchi, who you saw on the video, had been the secretary for a few years prior, and he made the move with Bante. Um, and then there was Ashvajit, who you've just seen, who was, was um, an old friend of Bante's and provided secretarial work for Bante. And then eventually Stana Shraddha, who came to, to also do that, and who became a, a good friend of Bante in his contact with Bante. And then Buddhadasa, who just completely selflessly uh, threw up whatever he was doing in Australia to come uh, across the world just to be at Bante's side, um, extraordinary thing to do. And just to be at Bante's side in his time of need now. Um, and well, what can you say about Suvadra? Probably the kindest man I've ever met, but he is a long standing uh, friend of Bante, someone who's been around Bante a long time, a very devoted disciple. And um, in a way, uh, a very brilliant carer as well, so caring. And then Vincent, the ex Sangadasa, um, who brought with him this complete plethora of skills, uh, being an ex nurse, but so devoted, so attentive in terms of his care um, and what he did for Bante. So really, there was there was a group of of very uh, special order members contributing both. Um, in close contact with Bante and outside, as I say, a sort of mandala of care and support. And it was really about the Dharma as well. And I'll mention Mahamati as well, because Mahamati wasn't here, but actually, um, I don't think people realise how much support uh, Mahamati had given to Bante in the, throughout those years, and a lot of really, help, uh, a lot of help for the team itself, holding that together. So I mention all of this just because it's good to express gratitude, of course. And Bante was was very grateful, very grateful for all of those that cared for him in those in those final days. Yeah. Uh, so, in some ways, um, I think the uh, I'd like to ask Sadhanandi, if I may and came a bandu, <laughs> if I may, because in the advertising, there was this question posed, wasn't there? Um, <laughs> what did it mean for us that Bante made his home at Edistana, and how will it shape the future? That's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> I thought I was, I was going to answer the earlier question what? first, which is the one you just answered. Oh, Why was you happy? Oh, okay. right, okay. Okay, Sorry. I'm just tuned back in, so that's fine. <laughs> Well, it was very important. But, I mean, basically, Edistan has become a pilgrimage site because mm. he was here, yes? Mm. And he felt that importance. And um, I mean, I, I said, I think um, uh, we all know that he had this, there were these three moments in his life where he mm. felt he had to move. Mm. Mm. And mm. one time was when he traveled through India and then Ambedkar died and he mm. picked up all those talks and did that, all the, um, the, um, you know, all the lectures and everything to to the people in India. Mm -hmm. And the other time was when he got you to drive to, was it to his mum in hospital? Oh, yes, yes. That yeah. sudden trip and over to South End. Yes. We've got to go tomorrow. We've got to go this morning. Yeah. We've been here, I think, the week before. Yeah. And then suddenly he just gets up and says, we're going to South End. And then I think she died. She died. Yeah, she, she had already died in the night. Yeah. 
So, um, so I think yeah. when he then decided we've got to move, mm, mm, I think mm, there was he knew we had to arrive and be here, like well, just mm, like you said earlier, mm, actually. Mm, and um, he didn't always get that moment, that feeling, and he did on that occasion in the in the, way, the same way that he got that in the other occasions. And then I think he has got a chance to live within a tree ratna context, yeah, which yeah, and he, it was like seeing. I mean, I've just been reading um. Just been reading Nagabodhi's book on Bante. Um, you know, the, what was it? The boy, the monk, the, the, man, boy, the man. boy, the man, the monk. The yeah. boy, the monk, the man. Oh, okay, yeah. good, good, good. And um, you just get a sense of this guy having dedicated his whole life to a project, mm -hmm. and he then was living amongst the fruits of that project. I have no idea what that would have felt like for somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's like mm -hmm. an artist mm -hmm. walking through a gallery and seeing their work on display or something. And all around him, he was seeing people coming through, meet, sometimes meeting two or three people a day, mm. uh, certainly on those big retreats. I remember the mm. six guidelines or eight guidelines mm. retreat. Mm. Three mm. women from that retreat every, mm. every day. And he was seeing, um, he was seeing uh, Tree Rana at its best. And mm. it was the fruit of mm. this huge mm. project that he planned. Mm. And um, actually... I don't know if what came down. Did you want to say something about the EBU? Because this is where this is totally important. Yeah. So mm. there was this uh, mm. a special event that we had here um, only a few weeks before Bante died. Uh, it was the European Buddhist Union meeting. And that's a meeting that happens um, quite regularly at mm. different places across Europe. And it was our turn to host. Mm -hmm. And it meant so much, uh, so much to Bante that we at Adistan would be able to, to host that meeting. And it meant a lot to him that we did it well. And, and we did. Right? At the time, the manager um, of Adistan was, was Diamala. And she really understood the importance of that and made sure uh, we did a good job. And um, you know, he, met, he met a lot of people from that meeting. And I think it was a, there was almost a sense of him, him being witnessed by the wider Buddhist community in you know, his, his legacy. And, this was a, you know, this place was one of the fruits, like Sadananti mm. was saying, of, of his dedication and his, and his work. And he got to, to, to be witnessed in that. Um, mm. you know, deeply, deeply moving event for him. Mm. Yeah, I remember on that, well, I'll just say, I remember on that event, I gave a small talk at the beginning. And then people came up to me and said, well, I said at the end, does anybody want to see Sankarachita while you're here and mm -hmm. I think a third of the group did different mm -hmm. teachers some of them had known him a long time they'd all bought gifts which is what you do to a Buddhist teacher mm -hmm. and um uh, and then people come up to me saying we now understand what Tri Ratna is seeing mm -hmm. this in place because they saw people living and working together and communicating in a particular way and they all knew what it took to set up a community mm -hmm. and some of them struggled to do that and they saw that He'd done it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they began to visit him. And at the end, when they all left, he called me in to, see, to say thank you. And he said um, he'd been outstanding. He'd attended a meeting, one, of the, one or two of their meetings. He'd met a lot of them. And then he said, oh, Sadhanandi, I just want to thank you to you, you and your team for doing such mm -hmm. a good job. And I said, you did it. You did it, but, you know, you were the one that did the good job, actually. I mean, uh, he just really went out of his way in quite a at quite an old age but like um, Ken Bandu was saying he, that his life's work got mm -hmm. witnessed by people that would have, was going to carry it to other mm -hmm. Buddhist movements and the fact that he died maybe three weeks afterwards yeah. it was as if there was a few things that were completed and then he died mm -hmm. it's fantastic mm -hmm. yeah. and in those in those final years he saw a lot of people his door was open to a lot of people I think the Last two years, perhaps, I remember counting up, or perhaps the three years, I remember counting up, at least in a two-year period, there were 400 meetings with people. Um, and that was a joy for him. In a way, it was a way of him giving as well. He'd always, in the later, in the latter part of his life, he'd, he'd have two boxes full of little rupees or books um, that he'd, he'd asked me to bring out so that he could just give to people mm -hmm. as little mementos of those meetings, um, which was quite moving, actually, to, to see people come away from those meetings with something for them very, very precious to, to hold on to. So 
you know, I think in a way, um, you know, in my experience of Bante, his whole life was just dedicated to giving the gift of the Dharma, you know, um, and, you know, Alistana in a way is expression of that, and the Dharma is at the heart of it. And I think he would be pleased to know that that gift is being passed on, you know. Uh, mm. Yeah. So going back to your question about mm. what, what the significance mm. of um, what it means that Bante lived here, in a way, it's, it's, I, I can't really answer the question mm. because I can't imagine an Alistana in which Bante hadn't lived here. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, particularly in his absence, trying to figure out how best to to honor Bante and to keep you know the Adastana flowing. It's a really challenging task and one that we're still answering. And um, should we try to do that without mm -hmm. him having been here? In a way, in those first uh, four years when he was here, well, maybe we had some time to not have to figure that question out because he was still here. Mm -hmm. um, and to have had that, to have that overlap, you know, mm -hmm. for many people in the future, they might never have had the chance to meet Bante, but mm -hmm. at least in those few years, I'm, you know, I was lucky enough to come in a year and a half before he, before he died. And to have had that experience, that, that, that helps me now uh, in my work to, to sort of carry, carry something on. Mm -hmm. And you even got the chance to, to build part of the burial mound with Sangadeva, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's, a, there's a sort of a, a continuity there that um, mm. makes it possible to do this challenging task. I mean, people did ask me um, to speak to Vanti about us building the burial mound while he was still alive, mm. because I think there were sensitivities. I can't remember if it's you or Suvadra or somebody came up to me and said, <laughs> could you go and speak to Vanti because you're, you're, you're creating the burial mound and he is still alive. <laughs> and uh, I said, OK, all right, well, I'll, I'll go and speak to him about it. So I asked him. And, um, and I said, uh, are you OK about us? We, we're preparing the ground for you, for you dying. But I know you're still alive, Bunty. And uh, he said, no, no, it's fine, Sadandi. Some of the guests might find it a little bit strange, but it's mm. fine by me. Mm. And I still remember there was this, um, he had this Mexicans, um, t um, Mexican Day of the Dead skull. Head. Skull, Head, yeah. yeah. Mm. And it had Bunty written on it. <laughs> and I said to him, Bunty, <laughs> You know this. You know this skull's got your name on it. He said, "Son Andy, it makes no difference." <laughs> Fair enough. You know the story of that skull. I think when you interviewed him, he said he he would leave it at the at the end of his bed. It was white, and it was the only thing he could really oh, make so out at the end of the bed as a sort of memento mori, <laughs> a sort of reflection on death. But yes, it did have his name on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it made no difference. No, it made no difference. No, of course not. No. Um, well, I did wheel Bante out to the edge of, his, of the of the site at one point. We have some photos of that, you know, and um, I think he's written about that in some of his late writings as well, uh, because he'd just visited um, an exhibition of Blake and Blake's etchings in the library, uh, and he felt like he was he himself was standing at death's door, his own death's door. And then he he comments, "What a lovely day it is, and isn't it nice the fields?" And so he wasn't squeamish about these things. He wasn't squeamish about these things. No. Mm. Yes, big question to drop on you, wasn't it? But it was in the advertising. <laughs> <laughs> So I wonder now whether we, we just open it up to so mm. have a few moments, mm. a few minutes to, to hear from anyone who'd like to, to share memories of meeting Bante Adistana. Yeah. Mm. Or, or questions for any of the people who are here. Yeah. Just unmute yourself and go for it. Is it Puna? Oh, Puna. Yes, Maloney and Puna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you from Australia? Yes. Yeah. Kay Brody. My good friend Maha City, <laughs> Birmingham. <laughs> Mahamati, of course. Daniela. Hello. <laughs> okay, well, maybe not, but that's fine. If, I mean, if you want to uh, even just type something into the chat, you could do that as well if you, if you, you prefer. Just be, yeah, if you've got something you'd like to. 
are to share this option for doing it. So there's a question. Oh, there's a question. Oh, fantastic. Annette asks, Sadhanandi, could you say something about the gift from Bante you passed on to King of Andy? Mm -hmm. Oh, ah, it's the Greenstone. The Greenstone. 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 Thank you, Annette. Um, yes, after I'd done the interviews of Bante, talking about his different uh, decades through his mm -hmm. life, and there was one particular decade where he did a lot of traveling and um, he went to New Zealand and uh, as well as other places that year. And uh, in his travels, he, he picked up a piece, a really quite a big piece of green stone from um, that New Zealand landscape. And, um, and then we, he wrote a poem about it and how a lot of green stone now fr from the original state of it being this beautiful piece of um, rock in New Zealand landscape to very strong ritual implement that was handed on from one chief to another. Uh, and then um, he, did, he wrote a poem about all of this mm -hmm. and I got to read it when we did the interview. And then at the end of all the interviews and everything like that, I went, I went round to see him one morning and uh, he said, oh, I'd like to give you something. And I'd like to give you something, Sadhanandi, which wasn't given to me by anybody else, but which I myself um, bought. And he handed me this green stone, which felt very strong, actually. I mean, it was strong to be given such a weighty sort of gift, mm. but it also felt very strong because from a mythic point of view, I did feel like one chief was handing over to some other chief in some mm. ways. Mm. And um, uh, at that time I was chair at Adistana. And then several years later when whenever it was when I decided to step down as chair. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe before that, I just knew a year before that. Um, mm -hmm. and it, was a, it was a series of community days that we had here at Adistana. And I just said, look, I've got this gift, but I realized that if I keep it for myself, then I make it a small, it becomes too small. This is a special gift. And uh, I think I need to hand it on to the next chair. This is what will get handed on from one person to another whoever takes up the chieftain, you know, the chief position of um, Adistana. And when Kimabandu took up the chair, I handed it over to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a little incident where we were, we were organizing a, an online event similar to this one during the pandemic and needed a photo of the Greenstone to, to advertise the event. Mm -hmm. So I quite pragmatically asked Adanandi if we could borrow the Greenstone to take a photo. <laughs> And I think I think there was there was a there was a small part of my subconscious that knew knew that <laughs> something, something was going on. But she, she left the stone on my desk with a little post-it note saying something like, "I hope it doesn't feel too or feel too weighty." <laughs> and I, I kind of knew what was going on. I pushed, I pushed it out of my awareness. First the green stone, then Adistana. Thank you very much. <laughs> So we've got another question. So Dan from the Gosinga community asks, why did Bante choose that part of Adistana in which to live? It was chosen for him, I think, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, Are we talking be. about, yes, Ratnadharani? Well, my memory is when he came to visit and the place was still pretty undeveloped. Mm. There were, I think there were three options. There was the, what we know as a, the annex, which is where he did live. Mm. I, I was trying to work out whether we could find some way of converting part of the library building into a flat for Bantam. Mm. Mm. So that was another option, but it did sound, it wasn't easy to see how that would work. And I know, I remember Moksha Priya had always had a vision of building a separate unit in the field on the grounds. Mm that would be specifically for Banti. I think he always felt an annex was a little bit um, inappropriate. Um, and I remember when Banti, I think the annex did work for him, mm -hmm. partly because mm -hmm. it was, there weren't huge distances. Uh, it was a, a place he could become familiar with and he didn't have to walk too far, although he was supposed to walk up and down for the good of his health. No. Um, so he, he chose it, but I don't think there was a huge choice. But I remember him emphasizing that it should be known as the, can you remember which way around it is? It, it, was, it was either the Ergian Annex or the Ergian Annex, 
and there was a he was very particular <laughs> about which it was. Yeah. But I'm yeah. afraid I never I never yeah. quite got yeah. it. Yeah. And then well, that's good to know. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Mm. Yeah. And then we've got a question from Amy. Uh, do you believe as time passes, Bante will become archetypal for those who never met him in person? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it can become archetypal for those who have met him. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think so. Yes, it's not just for those that haven't met him. There's this sense of the inner teacher, isn't it? That builds um, the more we, you know, with Bante, I always had this thing where I'd ask him a question and he'd say, mm, "Yes, well, you know, I've written about that. I <laughs> told you, Paramatha." So. Immersing yourself in his writings, his sense of the man, you're immersing yourself in three rap, and then the culture gives you a sense of Bante and what drove him, his character, the person. And in a way, I suppose, in, in some senses, that builds a sort of an archetypal image that can be alive, whether you've met him beyond, you know, and beyond his death for those that have met him or not, actually. It's um, certainly something that's spoken of in the Tibetan tradition, the sense of the inner teacher being guided and mm. directed by the inner teacher, um, blending one's mind with the teacher. You know. And that can come alive. And people say that, actually. Uh, so, yes, I, I, I would say yes. <laughs> before, I remember, before I'd ever seen him in, in, in person, it was actually today, six years ago, uh, it was about two weeks after I'd arrived here on the Dharma Life course, and we were having a photo of everyone who was living here to commemorate the fourth anniversary mm -hmm. of Bante's arrival. And um, he was wheeled out. So it was the first time I'd seen him, having been sort of aware of him for many years. And there was definitely this moment where, where something happened in my mind, the, the, him on an archetypal level, mm -hmm. somehow merging with this rather elderly man in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, it was, and it, in, a, in a way, they both they both existed simultaneously, and mm. it's easier to relate on the archetypal level now that uh, you know, he's not he's not around. Mm. Yeah. And I know what Bante would say as well. Mm. Well, there's another question. Mm. What would he just say? Hmm. So no, no, <laughs> just say. Hmm, you'd say <laughs> well, it depends what you mean by archetypal. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that comes from an archetypal place as well. <laughs> okay, so maybe there's, there's one more question. Let's let's um, make this the final question. So from Sangadara in the Gosinga community, Manchester. Mm. Uh, hi, Sangadara. So are there any parts of Bante's vision for Adistana that haven't been fully realised yet? Well, the red box. Dada Rinpoche's ashes, the heart of the heart of the library, um, in a shrine at the heart of the library. That was that was one of Bante's wishes, and we have still have that red box uh, in his sitting room in the Miragin House. So I suppose that's one thing that um, still has to be realised, and it's tethered to the the the, the ongoing work um, with the library. Um, however, that unfolds. Um, that will be. Uh, something that will turn that space into something of a sacred space, one imagines. Yeah. I was in a meeting from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. talking about the library. So it's a, <laughs> it's a very live, uh, live topic, <laughs> but my lips are sealed. <laughs> and yeah, there's also the, uh, the, the teaching community, the Alessandra teaching community that you might have heard of, which came into existence Mm. Uh, in the in the quiet or the seeming quiet of the pandemic, and that was definitely also part of uh, Bante's vision from the beginning. Mm. Mm. And then that's well on the way to being realised, is it? It's well on the way to being realised. That's, uh, yeah. that's a substantial part of the, the program for, yeah. for this this year. Certainly. Mm. Mm. Certainly. Okay, well, mm. uh, that was fantastic. It was really, uh, yeah, really lovely to hear your your reflections on on the significance of Bante being here, and and other reminiscences too. Mm. So I, I I promised at the start that we'd have a, a sneak preview of 
um, next Ergin House exhibition. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm away, we've got people from all over the world joining us. I, I see, see Daikato in Mexico, I've seen as it Perna and Marlin in New Zealand. So that's, that's a fairly broad spread of, uh, of the world and quite a few people in between as well. So, uh, but I, so I realize that maybe some of you haven't had a chance to see the, uh, the, the current exhibition. Uh, which is uh, on, on Bante's uh, Precious Teachers. It's his eight main uh, teachers. And really it's a, bit of a, um, it's a bit of a sort of entry into 1950s and 60s Kalimpong, because um, you, you've got all these, um, these ritual objects, these tankas, these, uh, these letters of, um, you know, which, which really locate uh, Bante at this extraordinary time. It's really kind of pivotal uh, time in, in Buddhist history. Uh, someone recently described it to me, breath, well, they didn't describe it to me, but they described it, and I heard about it as breathtaking, uh, This the, the exhibition that's there, j just because, yeah, wow, what a life that, uh, that Bante's had. But yeah, of course, there's, there's a question like, well, well, what happened next? You know, it's like the exhibition goes up to sort of the early 60s, and it's like, okay, well, what happened next? And, and probably a lot of us, um, well, we can tell that story, can't we, in, in our own ways, or, or we, we do. We do tell that story. Uh, he, he was invited back to uh, the UK by the English Sacred Trust. Uh, he went for this farewell tour in India and then was disinvited or uninvited. And uh, it very famously said then, oh, what's needed now is a, a new Buddhist movement mm. and um, started up activities in a basement in Monmouth Street. And, mm. and in a way, the sort of the rest is history, um, except you know, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I kind of know, I know the words, I feel like I know the words of that story, um, but I've got very little kind of, I don't want like sort of deep understanding of it in a, in, in a certain way, you know, the, um, the kind of challenges that he faced, the, the, the fabric of the society that he was working with and, and the decisions that he had to make uh, during that time, you know, just things like that, but why is our puja the way that it is? You know, at some point he had to decide, okay, we're going to do a seven-fold puja in this way. And uh, he, was in, he was in communication with other people about that and, and how that will develop. And so, you know, as, as I ask these, these kind of questions, I, I think actually my, my understanding of that time is quite thin. You know, I've got, um, I've got an intellectual grasp of what 1960s counterculture was like and, and you know, the, the kind of story of it in a certain way. But... But really, like nothing beats being able to uh, immerse yourself in that in that world, and that, that, that's what we that's what we want to do with the next Ergin House exhibition. Is in that period from uh, around 1965 through to the early 1970s to um, to sort of create somewhere where you can step into and and get a um, you know a tangible, even like immersive um, sense of the atmosphere of what uh, what Bante was doing at that time. So it's really quite sort of ambitious in a way to, to, to go back to the, um, the birth of Tree Ratna and, and, uh, and everything that Bante was involved in at that time. Uh, and we need your help in order to make that, that possible. So uh, the, the Urgin Sangharachta Trust um, is, is going to be overseeing. Moksha Priya is, uh, is the, the man who, who created and curated the, uh, the original exhibition. And he, he's the one who will, will create this next one. So, uh, actually, yeah, really, uh, a really high standard, I'm, I'm certain of. Um, but the Ergin Sangharachta Trust, uh, we, we need help in order to make that happen. Uh, we, we need around £4,000, £4,000 UK pounds, um, to make that happen. Uh, and, and actually, that's not that much in, uh, in kind of museum curation terms, uh, particularly at the, yeah, the professional level we're, um, we're hoping to, uh, to make it, to realise it at. Um, so, so my request to, to you, uh, if you're watching this live or if you're watching a, a video of it, is to, um, uh, yeah, is, is to, to support us, is to, to I, I request that you give us £50, or the, uh, the equivalent in whatever your, your currency is. I'm not going to be able to enumerate all of them from, uh, from around the world, but um, yeah, so, so £50 to support us in, uh, in making that, um, that kind of, uh, that world or that, that microcosm of what uh, the birth of True Ratna was um, come alive, yeah, to, to, to light up for us and for, uh, for any visitors who, who come through Adistana. And it's, I don't know exactly how many hundreds or thousands of people you have coming through every, <laughs> I don't know how many you have coming through every year, but 
Um, certainly this exhibition will run for a few years and, and hopefully all of you here will, will have an opportunity to, uh, to dive into that and see. So um, I think Patrick has put, fantastic, put the, uh, the link into the, the chat box. So yeah, please, uh, please give to us. If, if, you, um, if you fancy even sharing what your donation is in the chat, if you're, you're brave to do that, that, that could be really inspiring too. Um, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to celebrate that too. So, um, so yeah, please, please support us. Make that. Um, help us make that exhibition um, happen. Good. Good. So, so shall I introduce the next bit? Or do, yeah, I, I will. So, um, it's um, it's already been referred to a little bit that. Um, of course, Bante had to take this uh, this exercise um, during, you know, as part of his sort of health routine in, in, towards the end of his life. But uh, he, he wrote two poems. So one was uh, I do, maybe Paramartha will say the actual date. But so two poems related to the gravel path. Uh, one of his time in Canipong, and then then one a bit more an updated version, let's say. Mm -hmm. So so we're we'll here from uh, Paramartha on that, and we'll, we'll have um, as we go along a. Uh, a slideshow in um, uh, with some of the photos around uh, that time, and then um, we'll round off the, the evening with uh, with a mantra, the Padmasambhava mantra led by Yasha Deva. Fantastic to see some uh, some money appearing as well in the uh, chat. Thank you, Mahamati and Mantra Samudra. So this first poem is from 1952. Up and down the gravel path. Up and down the gravel path between the flowering trees, I've walked this summer afternoon to give my spirit ease. I could not idly sit nor serve stand upon the grassy ground, for like a meal wheel in my head, the thoughts flew round and round. Oh, thoughts of life and thoughts of death, chase thoughts of love and pain, like golden hawk and sable dove, inside my reeling brain. The withered hopes like wind world leaves, thick on my heart did come, with dreads like shapes that dance for blood about the sorcerer's drum. So up and down the shadowy paths between the moon white trees, through pools of silver I must walk to give my spirit ease. And from 2016, up and down the gravel path, an update. Up and down the gravel path between the flowering trees, I've walked this summer afternoon to give my spirit ease. But that was 60 years ago, and now I walk instead between the duck frequented pond and roses white and red. And as I walk, I push before the Roma that I prize, though not to give my spirit ease, but my body exercise. So gaily up and down I go upon the crunchy gravel, for that at 90 years and more is as far as I can travel. Om Mahum Bhadra Guru Padma Siddhi Om 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 Om Mahomba Om Mahom, 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 Om
So we'll um, we'll conclude conclude there. And just to say a really big thank you, really big thank you, particularly to um, to our speakers. So uh, Ratnadarani, Sangadeva, Yashadeva, Emma Bandu, Sadanandi, Paramartha. I also like to thank um, I should thank myself as well. So yeah, anyone else who maybe <laughs> does that too, um, and Patrick as well, who's been off screen. Maybe we can have a wave from Patrick. Uh, thanks, Patrick, who's, who's been uh, doing all the, the tech side for us. He's got three screen, four screens in front of him uh, going away. And um, particularly also thank you to Suvadra and others for uh, for giving the photos mm. for, for those um, uh, those slideshows, um, the tree rat now picture and video library as well for, for the, the archive footage. Um, and just just everyone really if, if i see there's quite a few people donating thank you so much to you and those who've donated and haven't put it in the chat as well thank you and just thank you for joining um and, and giving us a chance to really uh really celebrate this occasion um the the next opportunity or the next sort of feature of the adistana 10-year program i believe is tree ratna day there's a tree ratna day weekend um in which i think sad and you're involved with kishanti kara looking at is a guru necessary and uh, sort of diving into to that 1970s lecture by, by Bante. So yeah, stay, stay tuned, join us again, join uh, Adi Stala again for, um, for yeah, the, the rest of this 10 year anniversary. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. You can unmute yourself and say bye bye as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. bye. 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 bye.